Hello again from Shalom Acres. Just wanted to give you a quick little update on a on an appliance that we use regularly, probably multiple times a day on the house on the at the homestead, and it's uh, it failed on us. So we've got a Vitamix 4500 blender. It's a great blender. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't want a different one. Um, I, I know there's lots of other types out there, but we like the Vitamix. Works really well. Um, up until now, we've had this for five years and. Had no issues with it. Um, even in, even haven't uh, or haven't even had to sharpen the blades. It's been uh, it's been that good. Um, but I know it was at the kind of the uh, useful life on the blades. So there's plenty of other videos out there that talk about how to replace this bushing down here that actually sets onto the Vitamix that actually spins it um, with the with the Vitamix cells as a blade assembly. However, they don't really tell you. Other than to replace this piece and then replace the whole blade assembly, they don't give you a cheaper option. This piece right here, I believe, is uh, $16, $17, somewhere in that neighborhood. And then the blade assembly, depends on where you get it from, can be right around $70. The part I found very interesting is then not only do you buy the blade assembly, but then you have to buy a special tool to take this off. So when it's all said and done, you're, you're about out of $100. And I'm not, uh, me and my family, $100 is something that we're not going to just throw away. So one of those pieces, the tool that they have to, to spin this off, costs I think like $13 and it's a piece of plastic. So what I'm going to de demonstrate here is, we've actually fixed it. Um, I want to demonstrate how we fixed it, um, so then that way you can see it and hopefully save yourself a bunch of money. Because what actually happened in our particular uh, case was the bearings on the inside failed. And those bearings on the inside are actually replaceable. So instead of spending $70 for the whole blade assembly, I went ahead and took the option of pulling it apart and seeing if we could just replace the bearings. So what I've had here is just a type of a pipe wrench. I just stick this on the bottom here. Pull it a little bit tight because I tightened it down pretty good. And you just spin it simply off. That little turn. And you can use a large adjustable wrench, anything like that that you have. Um, let's say it's $13. And you don't have to have a piece of an extra specialty tool sitting around that you're probably only going to use once every decade or so. At least that's what it seems like. This piece right here, I torqued it down pretty good. Give it a little tap. And it should pop right out. Maybe. There it is. So now, this is a little piece that cost $70. And what's so interesting about it is, again, all the other pieces on it were fine. The only piece that failed was the bearing. And the bearing on the inside is actually a double stack bearing. And for those of you that know a lot about axial loading and thrusting, having two bearings in there is actually a really good design. So in this particular case, I like the design. I just didn't like the fact that uh, they wanted me to pay $70 for the replacement. So I'm going to do a small, do a small little example as far as where it's at. Right. So what you're going to want to do is take, take a pair of channel locks. And I'm, mine are pretty deep as far as the teeth on them. You can see that they're pretty good. Fairly, uh, fairly decent set. And when you go down inside there, it does not actually impact the teeth. It actually the channel locks line up inside there, so it will not impact your the teeth on your uh, on the actual unit. And it's got a small adjustable wrench. Take that, and you're going to go ahead and spin this nut off. And when you spin this nut off, you're going to go ahead and find a square washer. Well. It's a round washer but it has a square hole. You find your blade and then you're going to go ahead and find another small square washer. So this leaves you this little unit right here. And there's a couple different ways to take this apart. So if you have a small press that would be ideal and that's what I would recommend. That's what I was, uh, was able to do at the house. I've got a small little press and was able to just go ahead and press this out. When I pressed that out I found two small roller bearings just like this. 
they're just the sealed they're the sealed type roller bearing uh, nothing fancy about them but they are sealed the piece that I ended up going back with I double stacked them and uh, just the way they were and the, the nice part about these bearings are I can tell you the size so they're 22 millimeters outside diameter 8 millimeters inside diameter and then it's the thickness on it is uh, 7 millimeters and again, this is if you have the Turbo Blend 4500. Um, I'm not sure about uh, any of the other uh, any of the other models that they have out there. The piece that I did, as far as to upgrade this a little bit, I actually went ahead. They make a they make a bearing that actually has a little bit more of a dust protector on it, or kind of impurities on it. And I went ahead and put this style bearing on the top. So right here on the top portion, once you slide this out, um, I've put this, this on the top and then this one on the bottom since the impurities should, if anything would happen to it, would get in the top. The only trick to this whole piece is, I don't know if, if we can zoom in here, right down inside there, there's actually a small piece of rubber. And that rubber actually has a small O-ring. And that o-ring actually there's a milled spot on the inside of this uh, piece of metal so when you're when you're pressing that out make sure you don't damage that and then you can simply slide that back together uh, but if you would damage it i don't see it being an issue because as long as you put it back in there for the spacers you'll have the better bearing and then you know you shouldn't have to worry about it so that's as simple as it is Go ahead and uh, just put it back together while you've got it off. I would recommend anybody sharpening the blade uh, and then you should have a new unit. And these two bearings at the local store cost me $5. So if I would have went online, which I looked up later, if I would have had them in advance, I could have got both these bearings sent to us uh, for $3. But it's one of those pieces, bought them here locally support the local economy and at the same time didn't have to wait for shipping so that's it i'll go ahead and put it back together now so that way you can see the reassembly uh, which is pretty simple again hold this in place simply tighten it back down Just like the other videos that they have out there, whenever you're uh, whenever you're replacing this, there is two sides of this that's flat, which actually comes in handy as far as when you're putting it back together. Just put it in there, slides right in. Take your large nut that's on the bottom that holds that in. Just gonna push against it. Thread that together, there it goes. Get it pretty tight by hand. And then just simply take whatever you have as far as that's that you can open up and adjust. And there it is. It doesn't have to go real tight, it's pretty simple. And when you put it back together, no more problems with your bearings. From Shalom Acres, Shalom and have a great evening.